It's 6 p.m. in Toronto and 1 a.m. in Manama. This is Press TV's World News. Escalating protests against university tuition fee hikes in Canada. Thousands rally in Toronto in solidarity with protesters in Quebec. The demonstrator slam a recently adopted law in Quebec that limits the right to protest. Toronto is one of many other locations that see rallies in solidarity with demonstrators in Quebec. The protests are rapidly spreading throughout the country. Police have repeatedly clashed with the protesters, making thousands of arrests since February. The government refuses to back down on the fee hikes despite the unrest. To discuss that a bit further, we're joined now by Joshua Blakeney, Press TV's correspondent, who is joining us now via Skype from Calgary. Now, Joshua, tell us about how significant it is that these uh, protests are now spreading to, to large cities like Toronto. Well, it's highly significant because, of course, it's indicative of the fact that the crackdown has failed. The authorities in Quebec and the federal authorities thought they would crush and quell the, the uh, dissension in Quebec, the uprising that's been happening, a quarter of a million people out of a country of just... 34 million people rising up against austerity and draconian policies being imposed upon them. And rather than it dissipating, it seems to be uh, metastasizing across the country. And of course, I think this is uh, an interesting issue because education matters a great deal to Canadians. And I think there's a great deal of discontent with the federal government in Canada because it was revealed in recent months and weeks that actually the election in 2011 that provided uh, Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper with a majority in the Canadian Parliament was a fraudulent election. It, it's proven now there was widespread election fraud. So whereas the United States had their kind of neocon coup d'etat in 2001 with the events of 9-11, we had our coup d'etat, neocon coup d'etat in Canada just recently. And so the kind of neocon takeover is just happening in recent history in Canada. And so I think that's why there's popularity for uh, protests. It's very interesting that we see the protesters with the pots and pans, cleaning the pots and pans, the so- so-called casarole, because this is a, a replica of a policy that was employed in Chile under the uh, dictatorship of Augusto Pinochet. Of course, in Chile, uh, Milton Friedman was trying to impose kind of free market deregulation, kind of disaster capitalism upon the people. Uh, of Chile. And so now it's very strategic, I think, that the people in Canada have employed this strategy to illuminate their discontent with the regime in Canada, who I repeat, appears to be have no democratic mandate. And so these uh, protests are spreading not just to major cities like Calgary and Vancouver and Toronto, even uh, cities which many of your viewers may not have heard of, Regina, Victoria, Edmonton, the provincial capital here in, in Alberta. Uh, and this is this is highly significant. It appears that uh, that things that the momentum is uh, with the with the, the protesters. Right now, you know, Joshua, the latest news coming out for the, about those talks between the students and the Quebec government say that essentially the talks are deadlocked at this point. Um, tell us about the talks and where they have reached at this point. Well, the, it is a deadlock because, of course, some of the student negotiators have gone into the meeting, and on one hand, the uh, the, the politicians are claiming to be negotiating with them, and on the other hand, they're arresting them when they walk out on the street. So the politicians are speaking with a forked tongue. They can't be trusted from the perspective of the students. And so uh, I believe it's gone too far now. I mean, I think it, it, the reality is that the students were initially trying to negotiate, trying to be reasonable. At first, the politicians tried to foist the plan upon them of uh, prolonging the implementation of the tuition fee rise over a period of seven years, which, of course, was a risible attempt to defer the increases to the next generation. They tried to appeal to the self-interest of the incumbent students, and they, uh, they laughed at that and stopped at it because it was an attempt to, as I say, defer the, this attack on their education to another generation. And so all the, all the kind of uh, dirty tactics that have been employed by the state appear to have failed. And the popularity of those who are leading the, uh, the student movement who are increasingly being incarcerated along with 3,000 other, other individuals who've been incarcerated, their popularity is increasing. And I think what's important is that the older generations are also coming to the street. The older generations who themselves had the benefit of affordable education in Canada, of course they struggled for that in the 60s and 70s, they're coming out in solidarity with the protesters. So it's transgenerational, which I think is quite a unique phenomenon. And I think that um, from the perspective of Canada's illegitimate government, who's been waging very unpopular wars, you know, War in Canada is very unpopular, but yet the Canadian government has been bombing Libya, bombing Afghanistan, 
sending Canadian taxpayers' dollars to sectarian groups who are destabilizing Syria, you know, death squads in Syria, who are trying to uh, cement sectarianism in that country. They're sending millions of dollars of taxpayers' money to, to, to such groups, but yet at the same time, telling Canadians, oh, sorry, only education is only now for the rich, and, you know, healthcare is only going to be for the, the well-heeled in Canadian society, and that's unacceptable to ordinary Canadians, I believe. All right, Joshua, thanks a lot for that. That was Joshua Blakeney, Press TV correspondent, speaking to us via Skype from Calgary. Well, preliminary results are out. A Syrian government investigation into the Hula massacre blames armed groups for the killings of innocent civilians.